So, what we're going to be doing today is showing you the process of correctly cleaning the interior of a car. Um, for example, this car is a second hand car, just been purchased, um, and as you see from some of the pictures that have been put up, the interior is very dirty, full of dust, grime, seats have got stains all over them, um, everything needs a good hoover, a good clean down. So, what we're going to do is go through the process of how to correctly clean the interior of a car. Um, this involves, obviously, one of the, the techniques we've spoken about recently is injecting the seats with an enzyme treatment. Um, we'll be showing you the correct type of mask to use, the right sort of PPE to use, um, as a bare minimum, because a lot of people, when it, especially when it comes to cleaning the interior, use things like a dust mask. Um, dust masks are all right if you're dealing with just the day-to-day -day maintenance of a car, because you are essentially moving dust around. But when you're starting to use chemicals and products inside a car, you're then dealing with vapors. So of course, you need adequate masks. Um, to cope with that so we're going to take you through the process first thing that we're going to get done um, is get the car hoovered out and um, to a state where there's there's no dust or, or debris around like that's on the seats here that's in the floor wells in the center console and um, that sort of thing we're going to get rid of all that first so what i'm going to go through first is the different masks that you use for different things um, and first and foremost there are two very different types of masks this one the normal dust mask that you see carpenters and chippies and things wearing um, great for, for dust but that's all they're for um, so by all means you know if, you, if you're doing a maintenance sort of ballot on a car that you've taken care of it's already had um, a decent level of interior clean this sort of mask it'll do exactly what it needs to do it'll prevent dust getting into your lungs um, however <clears throat> I opt to use a GSP mask um, these filters that are on here um, not only do they repel against dust um, also inorganic and organic vapors as well prevents against those so when you are starting to use chemicals and things in the interior of your car this is the type of mask you need to opt for you start using vapors with one of these it's not going to do a, a thing to be honest um, if anything it's going to be much worse for you having this on than nothing at all um, in my opinion I, I can't see the benefit of wearing something like this if you're dealing with vapor because it gets trapped inside that that what is essentially a filter and you're just breathing in time and time again so I always opt to use something like this, which in the next coming video, you're going to see me using this even whilst hoovering a car. Because um, at the end of the day, I do this for a living, um, day in, day out. Um, I'm always cleaning interiors of cars, exteriors, the same as probably most of you out there. So it's best you get something that's actually up to the task and that's actually going to protect you. As much as we all laugh and joke about PPE because you tend to look like some poor acting scene from Breaking Bad or something like that, um, this stuff is is what is going to protect you and stop you inhaling any of the nastiness that's in an interior of a car because especially when a car is second hand you don't know what's happened in this car before someone might have had an accident in it be it they've, someone's been sick urinated there's blood you know aside from that you've got dead skin cells all sorts of things exist inside the interior of a car so having something that can actually take care of you whilst dealing with a car is well worth the investment in my eyes this mask they don't come cheap um i think this mask set me back about 60 quid with the filters on filters each time are about 40 pound a year to change them um but well worth the investment in my eyes so make sure you get the adequate ppe for what you need these sort of masks for dealing with vapors and things like i've said before absolutely useless so what we're now going to do is move on um, and get the car hoovered out to start with <clears throat> and then we're going to go through the whole process of dealing with the seats and everything else and that's where you're going to start seeing all the chemicals coming into to life and actually doing their job. <clears throat> right, so you're probably going to, not going to be able to hear me very well during this. Hopefully you still can. But one of the things to point out with this mask, this has check filters on um, that basically move in and out. Um, to check that you've got the right seal around your mask because one of the things that's critical when using this sort of personal protective equipment or PPE if you want to call it that is that it seals correctly so with this mask when you put it on you push in the filters try and breathe in if you can't breathe in and can't suck air in the mask is sealed correctly which is quite critical when doing this sort of stuff because otherwise you might as well not wear a mask so I'm going to crack on and do the hoover into the interior test my mask out and just get um, a run through of the interior being cleaned and then we move on to the more interesting stuff, I suppose.
some of you might have noticed on there, we had a lot of different pieces of equipment being used whilst I was hoovering the car. Now, it's always appropriate to have the right tools for the right job, of course. Um, a lot of us use Henry's, car show, vacuums, which is exactly what I have here. Um, but it's always having the right tools as well. Um, so obviously we have two crevice tools, a little short one for getting in around the edges, um, down where the floor mats are, and the long crevice tool for getting down the side of the seats. Um, obviously this ain't going to reach down to the bottom of the seats on every car, so that's why we have the, the longer crevice tool there. We've also got a flat tool. This one's brilliant for doing the, the carpets to get most of the dust out. Um, covers a slightly wider area as well, rather than having to, to deal with the little thin area. Um, on top of that, we've also got a little brush. This is, as you see, we start from the top of the car, we work our way down through each part. This is really for soft furnishings, dashboards, because it's, um, I think it's boar hair, this one, so it's nice and soft. Um, doesn't scratch piano black plastics, um, dashboards, that sort of thing. So we always have this. Also handy for doing things like rubber floor mats, stuff like that, providing obviously you clean it off afterwards. And then last but not least is our tiny little crevice tool. So this one connects into the hoover from this end. This side of things, we've got obviously a normal, um, sort of just straight flow atta um, attachment in the end. Then we have the little detailing brush, uh, just for getting in things like the vents, around switches, bits like the gear stick, in any of the little crevices where you can't normally get your crevice tools or your other brushes. Um, so this one, really handy to get hold of. So, this is the part that um, people have been asking me about since I first mentioned about injecting car seats um, with an enzyme treatment. Now, I've already done a couple of test sections just to make sure it all comes all right on the camera for you so that I can actually demonstrate actively how to do this properly. So, basically what I'm gonna show you is exactly how to inject into the, the bolsters of a car seat. It's quite self-explanatory to be perfectly honest, but there's a few things to bear in mind and take note of. Fabric seats, very easy to inject and get it exactly where you want it to go. Leather seats, not so much, can be done, but obviously you have to go through where the stitching line is. Um, if it's a leather seat that's got perforation holes, of course, you can inject through them as well. However, there are a couple of points to bear in mind. One, if the car has airbags in the side bolsters, because obviously you're not going to find them in the base of the seat, so you don't need to worry about that. But on the side bolsters, most cars nowadays have airbags in the sides, so you need to be very careful at the site that you inject into the side of the seat, because the last thing you want to do is go into the airbag housing or any of the cabling. These sort of side bolsters, there's not many cars that have airbags in this part of the side bolster, but do check and pay attention just in case. When it comes to the other side of things is cars with heated seats. Now, you can inject enzyme treatment into the, like the seat base of a car that has um, heated seats. However, I stress this with caution um, because obviously there's an element that runs all the way in S's and zigzag, all the way up and down the inside of that seat. And it's very close to the top of the seat itself. Some cars have it a bit lower down, but you need to be very careful if you're going to attempt to inject into a car that has heated seats as well. Um, I personally would advise against it, um, purely because you can cause a lot more damage um, under the surface of that seat by injecting into the electrics and things like that. So I would just stick to your normal um, extraction cleaning, steam cleaning process uh, for cleaning seats that are heated. Luckily in this car, we don't own our, you know, we, we don't have any heated seats. We don't have airbags in the side bolsters to worry about. So as I explained, I've done a couple of test sec sections on here just to show and uh, make sure that the camera can pick everything up. So normally you'll break the seat down. I've got three bolsters quite nicely here that I want to treat. Um, and then I'm going to treat the back bolster later on. But for demonstration, I'm going to be showing you on these three bolsters here. Now, <clears throat> you break the seat down into nine sections to inject. So three on each bolster, just in a straight line, straight down. So I've already done six injection sites. I'm now going to do the final three. And this is to show you exactly how to inject the seat in what I find is the best way possible. Now... <laughs> You can use as many of these as you really want. However, I think nine is probably the most you're ever going to want to use on a seat base. I use two and a half mil needles or syringes, sorry, with a, a two inch needle. That I find gives me the, as much coverage as I need to get in 
to the base of the seat and enough to pull out. Now, when you pull the needle out, as you're injecting the seat, you lift the needle as you're coming out. So you're pulling all of that chemical up through the foam with you as you're injecting it. So you create a chamber, then it can expand out through the foam and treat all of the, the, the nastiness that would exist inside of this, um, the seat foam where an extraction cleaner couldn't normally get. Things like obviously urine, blood, sick, milk, um, all that sort of stuff. This is why we want to get deep into the, the foam and treat all the, the nastiness, creates them smells and actually kill the bacteria that creates the odours. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do this injection process now. A couple of points to note, obviously you're dealing with sharks, so please be very careful. You don't want to go and inject yourself with enzyme treatment, um, otherwise you'll be in a very rapid visit down to the hospital. If you do happen to inject yourself with enzyme treatment, then make sure you get yourself to the hospital and take the bottle with you. So, the other thing is make sure you have a sharps box. Now, in your sharps box, this is for incineration only. This is where all the light, nasty needles and things like that go that you've used. They're not too bad because you're only using chemical, but obviously I have other things in the box like when, when I've used blades and things like that. So they do come in quite handy. You can pick one up, Amazon, eBay, Boots do them. Um, same as the, the syringes and needles, these can be found on Amazon um, and eBay. <clears throat> I personally prefer to go to Boots and pick mine up because um, I know they're a decent quality needle and syringe. So first things first, take the needle out of the housing and then just put the cap down out the way. And then all you're gonna do is quite simply inject it into the seat. Now, as you push down on the plunger, you lift the needle out so that you, but do it slow enough that you're gonna inject the chemical into the foam. So all we do is we just push down on the plunger and as we're doing it, we slowly pull the needle up until we get to the top. And that's it. Now, you can reuse the needles if you really want um because you haven't been in, injecting humans or anything like that so you could reuse this if you really want to however once you've done the car put them in your sharps box out of the way i tend to just use one needle per application and throw it out um some people might say it's wasteful but it's just for my own peace of mind so again just push down on the plunger and as you push down you just lift the needle out with it like so and obviously needles back away safe and straighten the sharp box almost so last one into the rear of the bolster here well the, the lower seat bolster and then same again you're just going to push down on the plunger and at the same time as you push down you pull the needle out And then just dispose of that in the sharps box and that's it and it's as simple as it is to inject enzyme treatment into a car seat there's no great trick or secret to it um, it just obviously aids and helps in getting the enzyme treatment deep down into that foam so it can actually get to work on all the nasty bacteria and odors and things that exist deep within the seats so one of the last things i want to mention in this video uh, while we're talking about interiors and interior cleaning is obviously when you're cleaning an interior if it has been exposed to you know anything like sick vomit urine that sort of thing um, milk you don't really need to worry about but things that are human waste um, need to be taken care of correctly so one of the things you need to make sure you've got is the correct incineration bags and anything you use to clean the interior of the car that's your you know cloths that sort of thing if you're using blue towel whatever it is you're using you need to make sure it goes in an incineration bag and get sent for an incinerator. So, um, the thing to note with these, of course, it's not rocket science. Don't put in your, your waste needles and things in these. Um, you should, uh, uh, you know, you're, you are dealing with waste at the end of the day. You should have a waste carrier license um, as well. So, that can easily be done. You can easily register onto your local council site as a waste carrier. There's no cost for it unless you're dealing with commercial waste um, and like building sites, that sort of thing. Um, but there will be a questionnaire on there um, and there may be a cost associated there's a lower and a higher tier so there may be costs associated with it um, however for the vast majority of you um, if you're not dealing with this sort of thing you're not going to be liable to any fees however do check with your local authority because you might have to pay a fee to do it 
So just make sure that you've got the correct PPE, be it your masks, your eyewear, that sort of thing. Make sure you've got an incineration bag for anything that is waste that's coming out of the car um, that has to be incinerated. And also make sure you've got a sharp box to put any sharp needles and things like that in that you've been using in the car. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, I hope it's been useful to you. If you've got any questions, any comments, um, or need any advice, by all means, drop me an email at kevinford at goldcrestballotting.co.uk. Leave a comment in the section below. I'll also reply on there. Failing that, you can always log on to our website, goldcrestballotting.co.uk, and our contact number's on there if you want to speak to me directly. Take care, guys. Thank <laughs> you.